Hey there, my name is Natalie and I'm here to talk to you about Pixel Scripts, which are our API for working with data in Pixie. So for this talk, first I'll explain to you what a Pixel Script is, then I'll talk a little bit about how they work, and then finally, what you can do with them. Just a little bit of background on me. I'm a founding engineer at Pixie. I work all over the stack, um, but as a lot of full stack developers go, I focus a little more on the back end than the front end, so I put that little joke on that right there. And at Pixie, I tend to focus on Pixel, our compiler, and our execution engine. So as you've seen in some of the demos in the other content, Pixel or Pixie ships with a lot of different views of your system. You can look at the state of your cluster, dive down into one of your services. Um, and here I just want to answer, how is it that we can create these views for you? So everything in Pixie, graphs, charts, and tables, they're all produced by an API that we call Pixel. So let's take a simple example table on the left. So Pixel is a 100% scriptable interface. So on the example there, we can see the script that generated that table on the left. We can go into the syntax in more detail later, but at a high level, the script is, you can think of it like a select star. We're loading the HTTP events data set for the past 30 seconds. We're grabbing the pod that each of those requests came from, and we're returning a subset of the columns as the result table. So backing up a little bit, we have the scriptable interface, but what do we design it to do specifically? The first task that it has is it needs to be able to query data that we auto collect in our system. The second thing it needs to be able to do is actually collect new types of data sources. And finally, we really didn't want to invent another language. We think that the world already has a lot of those, so we didn't want to reinvent the wheel there. So let's go into how we wanted to avoid building yet another query language. We needed a flexible API to work with data. And anyone who's familiar with Python may recognize some of the syntax on the right there. That's because all pixel code is valid Python. Now, we don't actually execute any Python under the hood, but we can get to that a little bit more in some upcoming content. The hope here is that users that are already familiar with Python don't have to learn a new syntax. However, narrowing it down to just Python syntax isn't enough. We need to make it easy to perform data analysis and machine learning in Pixie. One thing we noticed is that Pandas is a popular tool for data analysis in ML and Python. And it actually matched a lot of what we needed to do in Pixel. It supports easily expressing operations like filter, join, aggregate, and running inference on data. It has an established community and lots of existing docs. So what we decided to do is make all Pixel valid pandas as well. So Pixel, like pandas, is, you can think of it as like an embedded domain-specific language in Python. So to recap, we want to avoid reinventing the wheel and make Pixel more accessible, so we made it to follow the APIs in pandas and use Python syntax. So like SQLs, pandas, and other languages, Pixel is a data flow language. What that means is that queries are expressed as a declarative series of operations on data. So you can think of it as like operators are nodes that the data flows through. Because it's a declarative language, what we can do in our execution engine is plan and optimize the query so that the user doesn't have to worry about exactly how the computation happens. They just tell the system what they want it to do. So now let's talk a little bit about how we represent data in Pixel. And it's a concept that we and some other systems refer to as data frames. So you can see this line of code right here in the example that we've been working with, that we initialize a data frame in that arrow. And um, that is basically the Pixel version of a table. A data frame can basically be thought of as a set of rows and columns. And specifically, the columns are typed. In Pixel, we have a raw data type for the column, like string or int, but we also have what we call a semantic type. 
Semantic types basically tell you a little bit about what the column's meaning is. While the raw data type is used to make the query execution more efficient, the semantic type helps you understand the data better. And these types are propagated through your data frames throughout the entire lifetime of your query. So you can see this one pod column, we know that while its raw data type is a string, its semantic type is actually a pod. So let's talk a little bit about what this buys us and go back to the screenshot of the result table that this query produces. You can notice on the right that we've inferred that the latency column is a latency duration and we've added units and highlighting for that in the UI. On the left, the UI knows from the semantic type that that is a pod column. So what we've added is a deep link to a view for each of those pods. So when you're interacting with these tables, you can click that link and then go find out more information about that pod. In the query, we didn't have to do anything to make this happen. It's just automatically inferred based on the types that we track in pixel data frames. One more point on the stuff that we track in pixel data frames. Every record in our system, we store a per row context that's accessible throughout the lifetime of the query. In that context, we track things like the service that this record came from, the node that it came from, the pod that it came from. So even as the data is transformed, you can still access that information. More information about how we track this context and store it in our system will be uh, talked about in an upcoming talk. So please check that out when it comes. So now you know a little bit about how data is represented in Pixel, but how do you actually query the data? So in Pixel, we use transforms to do the various steps of analysis on your data set. Things like aggregate, join, filter, and things like that. The query on the right that we have there is pretty simple, but we support lots of different transforms in Pixel data frames. These are expressed as methods on the data frame itself. So all pixel data frames are immutable. All pixel transforms produce a new data frame. What that means is that the common logic that you use to make your data pipelines can be expressed as functions and actually used by multiple result tables. So for example, I could add a new function that uses the HTTP data function that we've defined above to produce a new table that let's say, lists all the pods that have received HTTP requests. And both of these output tables are actually using the same logic without affecting each other. So we think that this is a really powerful feature of the Pixel language is that you can make these composable data pipelines by refactoring out common logic into functions. So if you want to find out about the available functions that we ship Pixie with out of the box, you can check out our docs to look at the available functions in the PX module, which is the main place we store functions right now. We'll have more coming soon, and please let us know if there is some that you would like to see. And also coming soon is we are built for developers by developers, and we want people to be able to make their own modules for stuff that's useful to them. So in the future, you will not just have PX, but you can also have your own modules that you define with your own functions. So a lot of that was like, how do you query data? How is it represented? But it was all based on data that Pixie ships out of the box with. But we said in the beginning that Pixel actually allows you to express the collection of new data. So we can already do things like HTTP requests. We can do things like network statistics. But how do I get a custom source that Pixie doesn't know about yet? Like collecting the arguments passed to a Go function I'm running. We use a concept called mutations in order to create new data sources in Pixel. Now, there's other content available discussing Go probes in more detail, but I'll give you a high level description of this example mutation for the purposes of discussing Pixel. So on the right, I have a Pixel function here, or a Pixel script here, that basically says, I have a function called sum. It takes in two integers and I want in Pixie to write down the values that that function is called with during the execution of my program. And I don't have to modify any code in order to do this. All I have to do is run a Pixel script. 
So what the code on the right is saying is, please define a probe that listens to these arguments to my sum function. I want you to store the results in the table called sum table. And once I've done that, I can actually query sum table like any other pixie table. And so I just treat it like any other data frame, as you can see on that last line down there. So how can you get started with pixel scripts? The easiest way would be to start running the scripts that we ship Pixie with. You can do things like look at your JVM data, look at your various database events, trace network requests. But for a lot of users, they would actually like to put in their own scripts. And so we want to make that possible as well. The best way to do that would be to check out the open source scripts in our Pixel GitHub repo. And then you can use those as a jumping off point to write your own scripts. We really think that we've just scratched the surface of what's possible to express in Pixel, and we would love your ideas on what we should do with it or scripts that we should add to make it even more powerful. Thanks a lot for checking out this video, and please check out our other content videos coming soon. Thanks.